Welcome to the 21st Century Reformation Hour. I'm Herman Otten, pastor of Trinity Church in New Haven and the editor of Christian News. You are now in the office of Christian News. I've just completed laying out the next issue of Christian News. This one is dated September 6th. It's our Labor Day issue. Here's the front page of the paper. Notice that lead articles are called Labor Day 2010. And I have a picture of Martin Luther there and Catherine Luther. What we do there in this particular editorial is to show you that Lutherans are not only interested in doctrine, but have a long-standing interest in work. And they had a real uh, interest in helping the poor people. People always think, oh, they were the part of the capitalists. Now here I quote Luther and also what Walther said about communism and socialism. Next to what we have, the books that we're promoting this week, Women Pastors, and the Song of Songs. The reason that's the case is because of the whole emphasis on having women pastors. Some people say that, well, you're the only one that's opposing women pastors. No, I have here a copy of the 1,300-page Song of Songs commentary published by Concordia Publishing House. We reviewed it when it first came out. I just want to read to you a section where it says here about women pastors to show you that we're not the only ones that hold this view. As the church enters the third millennium, many denominations in visible Christendom are racing to abandon the biblical norms for sexuality, both for their members at large and in particular for their clergy. Sins of fornication, adultery, homosexuality, and lesbianism are gaining acceptance under the umbrella of tolerance and inclusiveness. Praise for virginity is seldom heard. Rampant confusion about divinely established gender roles and about the office of the ministry has led many denominations to ordain women and homosexuality. The result of the church embracing these abominations can only be disastrous. Now, by the way, this commentary, as I said, is 1,300 pages. For just this week, we have a bargain rate of only $19. That's below our cost. We would like to share the views in this particular commentary. The other one is called Women Pastors. The editor now is the president-elect of the Missouri Senate. He did about two years ago. It's called The Ordination of Women in Biblical Perspective. It has a series of essays. It shows you clearly that women pastors are contrary to Scripture. One reason I brought that up because I filed charges against a pastor, a professor in our church, who came out openly for women pastors. And some are challenging me now. What biblical proof do you have that women pastors contrary to scripture. I have that particular discussion in this issue of our paper. Notice we have a picture here of Katie Luther, Catherine Luther, in a book called Catherine Luther Liberated None. The book is right over here. It has an excellent description of Katie Luther, how hard a worker she was. That's why I brought it up here on Labor Day. Here's what Luther says about her in, well, in the book here. In a cartoon, Cochleus portrayed Luther as having seven heads. He could likewise have represented the seven standing places of Katie as she divided herself into seven parts, attending to seven kinds of duties at the same time, farmer, brewer, cook, nurse girl, gardener, inventor, comforter, and element of all beggars in Wittenberg, and the reformer's wife. It shows you what a hardworking what a person she was. The other articles I have here, notice I have a picture of a ship. It's the Titanic. The reason we brought that up was because of an excellent commentary. In fact, it's about the best I've ever read commenting on the Titanic. It's called Man Overboard by Dr. Scott Murray, who will now be installed as one of our vice presidents for coming up here in September. And he talks about the Titanic. So that led me to go back to research what some of the things that we said about. He mentions that famous movie in the Titanic. And I have here various articles that we wrote about the Titanic. Here we have pictures of, of the movie here and an excellent article about the Titanic, which we published, called Titanic or Satanic, where Pastor Ronald Stelzer shows how the moral views portrayed in the film Titanic are totally contrary to Christianity. To say that she said, he saved me from my, own, my only Savior. What from what from you saved? From her moral standards. That comes out so clearly, and that's all explained here. But this may be somewhat unknown to many of our readers. I have a picture of three ships here. The one is the Goya, the General Steuben, and here the Wilhelm Guslop. 
The total number that went down on these three ships were 18,000. The total number that went down on the Titanic were 1523. Yet we hear very little about the destruction of these ships. What happened at the close of World War II, as the Russians were coming in there, we had women and children and wounded soldiers. They went onto these ships and then they were torpedoed by the Soviet Union. And you can read about that there. Many people, they failed to recognize that. The other article here, I have here, of course, Glenn Beck's uh, National Mall, uh, the crowd that he had there. And I have two opposing views of Glenn Beck, one favoring him very highly, the other view saying, no, it's not the approach that Christians should take. Here we have the formation of a new Bible society, a new Lutheran church body called the North American Lutheran Church. Lutherans split over gay pastors, Bible beliefs. I can't have an editorial in the paper saying, let's praise them. Now, we know we're not in total agreement with them, but at least they're rejecting some of the parts of Elka, primarily homosexuality. But it goes much more than that, their whole view of Scripture. So I have an editorial titled, God bless them, and may they recognize even go further than, than finding what the real issues are, which would be Scripture. Over here we have Jesus first making peace with Harrison. Now, at the end of the convention here, the leader of Jesus first, Charles Miller, he was honored to even, didn't pass through the parliamentarium, declare a unanimous vote. Well, it's going to be very interesting to see now what's going to happen with regard to Jesus First, since they openly recommend women pastors. I have an article here, Jesus First Making Peace, and then I document the fact that they do support women pastors. Over here then, on pages two and three, various items in the, in the turret page, uh, and there, well, I think... There's some interest here. The former United Church of Christ president, he's divorcing his wife. He had been pursuing an adulterous relationship with his former uh, staff member here. I have here, then uh, on the editorial page, conflicting views on the mosque controversy. Ninth anniversary of 9-11 and the Ground Zero protest. But perhaps the most, uh, I have some who fought favorite, some are against it. Perhaps the most interest of our Lutheran Church Missouri Synod readers would be an editorial which I have on the last page, which talks about the wake-up torpedo hits Missouri on big lawsuit. We've been talking about the lawsuit here. I have the actual, I just got it yesterday as I was working on the paper. Here's a lawsuit. The Lutheran Church Missouri Synod lost big time. I don't know how much money they're going to have, but you read very little about it. I call it a torpedo wake up. I talked about torpedoing ships in this, in this issue here with regard to the Titanic and now perhaps it will serve a good cause if people will recognize that we have been telling the truth about this lawsuit. I don't think you read about it any place else. It wasn't written in, in uh, the official publications, all of the many conservative blogs. Why? Oftentimes, if the Christian news says it, well, then we don't, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. Well, the fact of the matter, folks, it did happen. And here it is. Here is the decision. How many hundreds of thousands of dollars yet? I have no idea what's going to, what it's going to cost. It doesn't say this. But it does clearly say that we lost. Missouri lost. The district lost. But what's significant about it is that the judge the, recognized our principles of congregationalism. And the lawyer pointed out, so clear, I have a picture of here, of the lawyer holding up Walther's church and ministry. And he defended that so bravely. Well, I urge you to subscribe to Christian News and you'll read all about it. In closing now, I just want to end that with a devotional thought. The passage we have up on top, if anyone doesn't want to work, he shouldn't eat. It shows you this whole welfare society we're not for. Of course, some people can't work, children, older people, but if you don't want to work, you shouldn't eat it. Well, God bless you folks. I hope I've inspired you to get a copy of the paper and read it for yourself. God be with you.